So I'll introduce um, the first presenter, which is Jared Harris. Um, he's studying electrical engineering, um, uh, undergraduate degree, um, uh, but he's, this is actually his second degree. He's uh, already a qualified geologist, and um, um, he's sort of, um, you know, uh, morphing his uh, career direction. Um, this particular project is, is a step out of even that, even those sort of um, uh, fields, and uh, the project title is 3D Reconstruction of Two Western Australian Shipwrecks, the Belinda, which wrecked in 1824, and the Star, which wrecked in 1880. Um, this project is under the supervision of uh, Associate Professor Petra Helmholtz, who unfortunately isn't here today, but she's getting ready for teaching. Um, and we very much appreciate funding from the WA Museum for this particular project, the, uh, particularly the uh, Department of Maritime Heritage. And we're also very uh, blessed to have um, the photographer who took these underwater uh, photographs in the 1970s, Patrick Baker. Where are you, Patrick? Hello, Patrick. Um, so uh, uh, Patrick was just gushing about how wonderful these 3D models look on the, uh, on the, on the screens. So with that, I will pass on to Jared. Okay. Uh, yeah, my project was on uh, digitally reconstructing two West Australian shipwrecks, uh, which were photographed in... 83 and 91, 1993, 1983 and 1991. Those are my supervisors. So first of them, Star. This was built in 1876 in Fremantle by this guy, Thomas William Muse Jr., who was one of the early Fremantle characters. Uh, it was a schooner, 24 metres long, and fitted, outfitted to be a whaler. So it looked kind of similar to this photograph of a different ship, but much more threatening if you're a whale. Um, it was wrecked in 1880 after an unsuccessful whaling expedition to Geograph Bay down in southern WA and uh, where it drove straight onto a well-charted reef. And uh, it's the only WA-made uh, excavated shipwreck to have been excavated so far. So it is a historically significant one. Uh, it's, it's located a little bit south of Perth, just off Port Kennedy. Uh, a couple of caves off the mainland and nestled in between a couple of coral reef sections in about three metres of water. Uh, Belinda, on the other hand, was a brig, different type of ship, built in England and uh, sailed over in 1823. Uh, we don't know how long it was, but it could carry more cargo than the uh, schooner Star. And it was outfitted to be a sealer and sent to southern WA in 1824 and it ended up wrecked on a beach uh, on Middle Island in the Recherche Archipelago near Esperance. Uh, everyone survived, but because this was very early on in WA history, there weren't very many people around to rescue these, these the, the crew, and so they had to wait five months before they could be picked up by another ship. Uh, Middle Island, uh, near Esperance, just off the coast here, and it wrecked just off the beach here, so it's only in about three metres of water as well. The, the wrecks themselves, these are the photo mosaics that Pat Baker put together after the expeditions. Uh, Belinda, about 11 metres of exposed wreck, uh, and Star, about 15 and a half. Belinda is surrounded by sand, uh, which becomes significant in the processing of these data sets, and Star, surrounded by limestone and coral, highly featured. Um, so Star was discovered in 1972 and excavated in 83. That's when uh, all the, the photo sets were taken and Belinda 89 and 91. Uh, the sand cover was removed from the wrecks, fragile artifacts were removed and placed in museum storage and reports produced. Uh, Patrick Baker was the photographer for both of these and uh, in the 70s were the, Im the, the images taken numbered in the 70s uh, and they were taken using Nikonos 3 cameras, I believe, and recorded on 35mm film. This is what the Belinda looked like during the excavation. Uh, so the photos themselves are mostly stereoscopic photographs. So they were taken using this rig that Pat's using in this photo that was on the star wreck. So on a bar, two cameras held at a consistent distance apart. And if you then take those photos, which are these two, and give one image to one eye and the other image to the other, you can see this site in 3D using a tool like the stereoscope up here. And uh, full coverage of images allows for a photo mosaic to be stitched together 
that gives an overall map of the site. However, when you've got that many photographs and a lot, a lot of coverage, you can also feed those images to 3D photogrammetry software and produce a 3D uh, model of the whole thing. So in 3D photogrammet photogrammic re re photometric, photogrammetric reconstruction, uh, this is the general workflow. So we pre-process the images to highlight features. We mask out parts that are not consistent between images. Align the cameras based on uh, feature matching between images and then use markers to make sure that that's correct by saying this is the same object that is in this photo. Uh, if we then have multiple sections of the rack that have reconstructed, then we can merge those uh, based on their relative location to each other, produce an overall surface, and then uh, project the images onto that to produce uh, an image that wraps around this 3D shape. So firstly, processing the image, you can apply filters to highlight and bring out the contrast so it makes it, makes it easier for the software to recognize the same features. Uh, placing markers, you can see that 0.137 in the image on the left is the same as 0.137 on this other image. Pretty straightforward. Uh, that also shows the masking. That's removing these scale bars from the, from the reconstruction, telling the software don't worry about that. Uh, when you've then got uh, camera alignment based on the features that it can match between the images and placing that in the 3D. This is 240,000 points that the software has recognized placed relative to each other. These are all the camera locations and a thumbnail for each of the images. So on Star in particular, this worked essentially unguided. Uh, once you've got that through to a mesh, a surface, then you can project the images from the camera locations onto, onto the shape. This is the model with, uh, with, some, with the um, images draped onto it. Uh, and it, that can be done at a variety of textures. Star, we put four 8K textures, which is a lot of pixels, but it should be apparent when you have a look at it on the, on the big cylinder screen that that was worth it. Uh, was that, yep. Uh, we can then scale it. Uh, because each of the photos included this, a scale box that is one meter between the inside edges of the box. And so we can say, here's point 13 and 14, that is a consistent distance that's one meter apart. We can do the same with point 15 and 16 and a variety of other places along the wreck. You then uh, can scale the whole thing using a best fit to make all of those one meter. And that gives a pretty uh, precise scaling for the whole thing. Star, as you saw from those previous images, worked out very well. Belinda was much more difficult, partly because it's surrounded by sand, and sand with a little bit of movement in the water will move and provide a lack of features for the software to, to pick the difference. Over here, this is a flat plane of wood that's covered with a small, a thin layer of sand, a little bit of movement, all of a sudden the, the program can't recognize uh, that from the next image. And here, this is the same part of the wreck. And while with our brains, we can figure out that say this piece is the same as this, it's a lot more difficult for the software to do the same thing. Uh, so for that purpose, we had to use a lot of markers for um, the wreck, uh, for the Belinda wreck. And even then it wasn't entirely successful. Uh, this is what the full model of Belinda looks like when um, when we try to use all of all the rec as a full model. We've got hundreds of markers through there and it still provides a, uh, a banana shape to the rec overall. So the model that we've ended up presenting over here, though you can look at that, that one as well, is uh, separate chunks aligned into the right rough locations. So the scaling over here is good because a lot of that was stereo photography, uh, but over here, it was smaller and the, the image alignment is less reliable. But it's a, a good overall view still of the, uh, of the wreck. Where's the keyboard? Oh, that's, that's that one. Cool. Because uh, we can now have a look at the models in 3D. So this is star. Uh, Overall, you can see, so uh, general directions, the bow is on the left and the stern is on the right in this view and this 
This piece of wood here is the keelson. This runs down the inside center of the ship. So, so these are the two wrecks. Um, so we'll have a look at the star first. So again, we've got uh, bow left, uh, bow left, uh, stern right. You can use the laser pointer if you'd like. Oh, yep. And yeah, we'll fly in for the moment. So the main features of the wreck, so we've got the, the keelson, as mentioned before, is this main chunk that ran uh, parallel to the keel just on the inside surface of the ship. Uh, underneath that, this is actually the keel that would have run just on the outside. The outer hull are these timbers along here. So that was the only part of the ship that was designed to be wet um, as opposed to all of it. These are the frames which are paired for strength apparently. I'm not entirely sure how much of an effect that had on the strength of the ship. Um, and the inner hull frame. So this is where all of the cargo would have been, would have been sitting in the ship. Uh, if you have a look over here, this thing, this bent shape running roughly this orientation, this is a iron knee. So this would have been attached on the inside surface of, of the hull and supporting the deck on top of it. So that, that part, um, there's several of them. There are, I believe, three or four in the wreck and there's one, another one here. Um, so yeah, that's the, those are the main features of the wreck. Uh, there are plenty of other details that I'm sure someone who's not a geologist slash half-trained electrical engineer would be able to point out, uh, but we'll hopefully get a bit of input during the, pre during the demonstration. The Belinda model over here, uh, again, we've also got frames running along. These are not paired, unlike with Star. They are on the same scale, by the way. Uh, we've got the outer hull, framing, hull, um, hull planks on, on the bottom here, and that, that runs the entire section of the wreck. Uh, the inner hull planking, this surface here, also here. And we've got uh, sand, concretion, and some ballast stones that cover the rest of this. As you can see, it is uh, in parts. It's not the best possible form for, for the wreck model to be in, but, uh, but that's the, the best result that we've ended up with, and it's still an overall good representation of, of the wreck. Um, yeah, um, now I'm trying to think of what I had on the next slides, but we're pretty close to that. Excellent. That's perfectly timed. Um, in, terms of, in terms of further work, this is definitely something that can be improved on, the Belinda model. Uh, and if you then combine the models that we've got here with the locations of the different artifacts that were picked up from these shipwrecks, that might provide some more context on uh, how the ship wrecked and provide a more interactive experience. Um, the, the models have been provided to the WA Museum and they're also uh, available online. Oh, this, is, this is what the Iron Knees look like in a ship that is not wrecked. Uh, the version that we've got would have had the iron extending in this direction underneath those, those supports. Uh, Belinda features. So afterwards in the demonstration, we'll be uh, showing the wrecks on both the cylinder display, the amazing 3, a 3D version of what you just saw, which is even better, I promise. Uh, and also on the Tilt 5 table, which is going to be on the center there. Uh, that allows for viewing the models on a tabletop. Up to three people can view it at the same time. Um, and yeah, they're also uploaded to Sketchfab. And we did do VR versions, but that's just too many things to run all in one thing. So we're not going to do that today. Uh, already mentioned some further work. Uh, there's more recs to process. Um, so the, the learnings regarding uh, how difficult the setting makes the processing of these, these uh, models is hopefully going to inform that, uh, but there's only so much that you can do. The, to provide some context, there were a couple of days out of that eight day expedition to the Belinda that were completely knocked out because literally over a ton of seaweed washed over the wreck. So I'm amazed that we've got the image uh, coverage that we do have on that wreck. 
Uh, and yeah, I'd like to thank my supervisors, Andrew Ross, who can't be here, but he was WA Museum contact, and Petra from uh, the School of Spatial Sciences, um, and Daniel, who helped me through many uh, issues using the software to process this. And uh, Patrick, thank you very much for taking these photos. Amazing data sets to work with. Yeah, it was funded through the uh, Underwater Cultural Heritage Program through the WA Museum. And this is a seal over the wreck of Belinda, the sealing, uh, sealing ship. And uh, one has clearly outlasted the other. So thank you.